Mr. Tobin? Yes, Your Honor. How are you doing, sir? Very well, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tobin. If you could just come to the center. Okay. May I approach? Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Go to the other side. All right. Good to see you. Mr. Mr. Tobin, if you want to. Certainly, Your Honor. Thank um, you. I got to make this relatively short, as you can understand, but I, I wanted to take up your motion. I have read your, read your motion and the declaration and everything attached to it in all the cases, um, and I have reviewed it, so I'd rather you not regurgitate that based on our time limit, but anything you wish to add to that is fine. Um, if you want to, if I could focus you a little Please. bit. Please. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. And then, yes, sir. Uh, as far as um, your comments about uh, Virginia Rule of Evidence 2, colon 508, that's a criminal uh, rule of evidence, so I'm, I, that's not, not, your strong, not your strongest argument. Uh, and as far as what goes on is when the, uh, or if the witness testifies, um, whether it's hearsay or it's third-party knowledge, that's something I'll deal with at trial. So again, uh, not what I'm concerned with. As far as Supreme Court Rule 314, um, which um, I would like you to, to talk uh, a little bit about that as far as intervention. And I, I got to tell you where I'm at right now, the concern, the, the, the issue I have uh, with the argument is intervention obviously would make you a plaintiff or defendant in the case, and it has to deal with an issue that's germane to this case, and this is a defamation case. So if you, could, if you could just tailor your argument to that issue, sir. Sure, I'm happy to address the intervention. For the record, Your Honor, Charles Tobin from the law firm of Ballard Spar. Yes, sir. Here representing Mr. TMZ, um, which is the publisher of uh, news and entertainment uh, for the celebrity and entertainment industry. Um, and Your Honor, I, 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 we're seeking to intervene simply to protect the relationship between reporters and their sources um, when it comes to reporting news in the public interest. We, as the court noted, we, we really don't have um, a, a dog in this hunt as far as Mr. Depp, uh, Ms. Heard. Um, we're really here purely on the, the First Amendment based issue of uh, reporters' privilege and reporters and their sources. Your Honor, the intervention rule, um, as the court is aware, allows intervention uh, by anybody uh, where the issue is germane to the subject matter of the proceeding. Um, and certainly, Your Honor, the uh, purported testimony, the, the proffered testimony of a former employee of TMZ who um, purports to be in a position to uh, disclose confidential information learned during the work, during the operation of journalism, during his work as a journalist, um, is a germane issue that is being raised in this case. And, Your Honor, we would point the court to the Tafts, Fletcher, Malden, and Reed versus Southern Bank and Trust case, 213 Virginia Circuit, Lexus, 253. It's a Norfolk Circuit Court decision from 2013. And there it was an interpleader action. The funds had been interpleaded into the court by two trust companies that were fighting um, over it. Um, and the, the, the man who had sold his property, who had no interest in the funds themselves, interple intervened in the case because he was uncertain as to his liability for excess funds, which was an issue that was not directly in litigation between the two parties. It was not part of the cause of action between the two trusts fighting over the money that had been pleaded into the court. The circuit court held that uh, certainly the rights of that man was going to be affected by the decision making in the case. He would be prejudiced if he didn't have an opportunity to intervene and no party was in the position to assert his rights. And so similarly here, Your Honor, uh, TMZ is a, a news organization. It routinely accepts information as is common in journalism under exchanges of promises of confidentiality. If it is not able to intervene in this action and neither of the parties is going to be in a position to assert the reporter's privilege, it is, um, w, it is TMZ's journalist privilege that we're talking about, then the rights are certainly going to be prejudiced. Well, but if the witness, I, in all the cases, and, I, and I've reviewed the cases that you had, in those cases the witness was compelled to testify and came and was forced to testify, so there was an issue about the privilege of the witness. It's my understanding in this case, this witness wants to testify and is not under subpoena. He has been subpoenaed, Your Honor. That's incorrect, Your Honor. He's voluntarily subpoenaed. Mm -hmm. A subpoena from this court would not be enforceable. Okay. Witness Your Honor, I have a copy of a subpoena that was entered last night compelling Mr. Tremaine to give testimony in this case. 
And so he is coming under a compulsion under subpoena. Well, and and if he takes a stand and, and, he, and he asserts some sort of privilege, then that's something I will deal with at that time. Sure, but uh, I'm here because of the scenario where he may not assert that privilege. Right, exactly. And that's, and, and that, and not, that's why I'm saying all your cases that you showed were the opposite, where they did assert the privilege. Well, it is it is a, um, a unique situation. Right, where, and I understand you might have some, some issues with a former employee and you have some avenues to go um, deal with that. Uh, but but once, anyway. once he testifies and the privilege is waived, we have lost our opportunity um, to, to intervene I and I to intercede. So. Right. And, Your Honor, the privilege, you know, I know, Your Honor, you said you read the case law. I, I, I did. appreciate that. Yes, sir. But the privilege it has been recognized by the Virginia Supreme right. Court in the Brown case and applied by the circuit courts uniformly. It is a very important underpinning of the relationship between reporters and sources and reporters and the public uh, without the ability to enforce uh, its promises. Uh, by, by current employees or former employees, a news organization will have absolutely no control uh, over uh, being able to enforce its promises. Mm -hmm. And so we would ask the court to permit us to intervene mm -hmm. and to, to assert the, the privilege that belongs to TMZ, which is the organization, after all, Your Honor, that would be responsible to the source if this, the privilege were waived. All right. I understand, Mr. Tobin, your argument. I appreciate it very much. Okay. Did the parties wish to be heard? <laughs> Uh, good morning, Your After. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to begin where Your Honor began. As a threshold matter, the court should deny TMZ's motion to intervene. Intervention is not appropriate for the reasons suggested in Your Honor's questions. As Your Honor is well aware, intervention is only appropriate with leave of court where a third party seeks to, quote, file a pleading to intervene as a plaintiff or as a defendant to assert any claim or defense germane to the subject matter of the proceeding, unquote. Virginia Supreme Court Rule 3, colon 14. As Mr. Tobin, to his credit, is, has uh, conceded, uh, TMZ is not asking to file a pleading. Uh, it cannot properly categorize itself either as plaintiff nor defendant, and it seeks to assert no claim or defense germane to the subject matter of this action. Moreover, even if the privilege were applicable, which is not the case here, the testimony intended is directly relevant and would outweigh uh, any qualified privilege. Quote, an intervener must be asserting an interest that is part of the subject matter of the litigation, unquote, Hudson versus Jarrett, 269 Virginia 24 at 32. Here, as Mr. Tobin stated, TMZ seeks to protect a potential seeks to protect potential information solicited from a third party witness, which is in no way a matter before this court, citing Commonwealth versus Gill, 89 Virginia Circuit 323, a 2014 case denying a motion to intervene where the intervener filed it, quote, to protect a property right, not a matter before the court, unquote. The outcome of this trial will not affect TMZ, and it does not have a sufficient interest in the subject matter of this suit to intervene. See Texas Fletcher, Maiden and Reed, PC versus Bank National Trust Co. 2013 Westlaw 584-9140, granting, uh, and, and this is distinguishing, uh, granting uh, the motion uh, to intervene where the intervener's liability would be affected by the outcome of the litigation. Finally, Your Honor, TMZ lacks standing to object to testimony by a third party in this action because TMZ, as Your Honor pointed out, is not being compelled to testify. TMZ's reliance on the Philip Morris case for the proposition that the privilege cannot be circumvented by seeking confidential source information from an employee is an apposite. 36 VA circuit at one. For one thing, uh, as noted in that case, there is no testimonial privilege akin to that enjoyed under the Fifth Amendment, which would allow a reporter to refuse to appear before a grand jury and answer questions. And Philip Morris, as Your Honor is aware, the party issued a third party subpoena for records to trace confidential sources. Philip Morris is an apposite here, as that case uh, related um, as, as this case is, is related to witness testimony, not 
records. As Your Honor suggested, TMZ's quarrel, if any, is with Mr. Tremaine to the extent that he had an NDA that was enforceable, applicable, uh, and that's not what we're hearing from Mr. Tobin. So to the extent that TMZ, which is not exactly Edward R. Murrow, Your Honor, uh, to the extent they have uh, a beef, as it were, a cognizable beef, it is with Mr. Uh, it, it is with Mr. Tremaine. It is not with Mr. Depp, and they clearly do not have standing uh, to assert or to intervene because they are not intervening as a party, plaintiff, or defendant. So we respectfully submit to the extent the court disagrees. I can go into the arguments That's why right, the sir. privilege is inapplicable, but I will All reserve right. that. Thank you. All right. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I would like to weigh in from just a different perspective, okay. and that is because we're trying to deal with some important issues of privilege, et cetera. But from our perspective, representing Ms. Hurd, um, we have issues with this witness separately, and I want to make them very clear for the record. This okay. is somebody who should have been identified in discovery, was never. Second of all, it's not relevant whether, it, apparently what they're saying he's going to testify, and we have not had the opportunity to discover that, um, is he's going to claim that someone leaked to TMZ that Ms. Hurd was going to obtain uh, the TRO on that Friday and also leak the video, the, the kitchen video with Mr. Uh, Depp being rather violent. Um, and. It, uh, I'm almost certain he's not going to claim it's Ms. Hurd, so it's, I think it's never going to come in. Right. Ms. Bernhoff, um, I understand all that argument. Do you have any argument as to this particular motion? I, I, no. My, my okay, well, then we can, we can address well, you. My point is, though, if you balance the prejudice versus the probative value, I, I don't even see how he can come in on foundation okay, well, or hearsay or relevance. That's just not part of this motion uh, at this time. Thank you, ma'am. All right, Mr. Tobin, your, your motion, you get the last word, sir. You know, I, I appreciate that um, the, the court kind of shook your head when he made the snarky comment that this is not Edward R. Murrow. Obviously, the First Amendment applies to everybody, citizens, the New York Times, or TMZ. Um, and this is a First Amendment-based privilege. Your Honor, the uh, Philip Morris case is actually a very good case to answer Your Honor's question um, about the, uh, the, the intervention of somebody else in order to assert the privilege. Um, there, uh, ABC was a defendant in the case, and it moved in order to prevent other people, the phone company, right. But um, they were airlines. already in the case in that particular I understand. Matter. There is no other mechanism, though, and so, I, you know, it's, it would be an interesting procedural issue for appeal, Your Honor, whether a journalist, um, a journalism organization or anybody else who's a First Amendment holder would be denied intervention on a constitutional-based privilege. Um, uh, I also, just for the record and for the merits of the case, if I understood uh, Mr. Chu correctly, he said this is not an issue in the litigation. This does not relate to an issue in the litigation. Well, if it's not an issue in the litigation, if it's not part of a prima facie part of the defense, part of the allegations of the complaint, if it's impeachment evidence, if it's collateral to the main issues in the case, under the Brown v. Commonwealth decision under the Virginia Supreme Court, under the application of that privilege in the Philip Morris versus ABC News, it is not supposed to be compelled in this case. Which is, again, it's not being compelled, it appears. Well, he is appearing by subpoena, and it is a compulsory process, and he will have an obligation unless he asserts privilege right. under oath. But it is our privilege, Your Honor. It's, it's not an employee, a loyal or a rogue employee's privilege to waive uh, on behalf of its employer. This is an unusual situation. Um, <laughs> Tell but, me about but the law, But the answers are there. Um, in the law, and it is, it is a First Amendment concern. This, this is not the first unusual situation in this case. I can for, for tell you, us, for uh, Mr. Uh, Toad. For anybody here, I'm sure. Yes, sir. I appreciate you yeah. coming in today, and I appreciate Thank your, your arguments. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, in this matter, uh, under uh, Virginia Rules Supreme Court uh, 3 colon 14, a new party may intervene as a plaintiff or defendant to assert any claim or defense germane to the subject matter of the proceeding. 
A new party may not intervene unless they assert some right involved in the underlying litigation. A party is not entitled to intervene merely because a byproduct of the litigation adversely impacts them, and the decision to allow intervention is within the broad discretion of the trial court. Here, the rights asserted are not germane to the trial. The central issues in this case are whether defendant defamed plaintiff and whether plaintiff defamed defendant through a theory of vicarious liability. The issue of the confidentiality of sources has not come up as in other cases cited by EHM, which is the, the, the corporation that TMZ uh, belongs to, is under their umbrella. Um, in Brown uh, versus the Commonwealth, there was an attempt by the criminal defendant to subpoena institutions in order to obtain the name of the confidential source. When the author of the article was subpoenaed, she refused to identify her confidential source on the stand. And in this case, uh, it appears that the witness is willing to state uh, the name of the confidential source without being compelled voluntarily. Uh, whether that breaches a non-disclosure agreement between Mr. Tremaine and EHM is not germane to this matter and can be litigated in a separate matter if EHM so chooses. And while breaches of contract must be taken seriously, and the court does, any alleged breach is not germane to the underlying litigation here. That contractional action has no bearing on this case and is thus not germane to this litigation. Therefore, I'll deny the non-party EHM Productions motion to intervene. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. Uh, Thank for you. the record, I've known Mr. Tobin for several years. I meant no snarkiness uh, toward him. Well, you're just a snarky guy. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, I am concerned that we uh, preserve the issue fully. Um, and so, for the record, yes. For sir. the record. And so I, I would ask, may I have the opportunity to object when Mr. Um, Mr. Tremaine is questioned, question by question? You're, you're, no, no, sir, you're not a party to this case. However, I will note for your record your objection to his complete testimony uh, on behalf of your client. Right. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Your microphone, Ms. As with the Hicksville uh, uh, witness, Your Honor, I would ask that we could voir dire him before the jury um, to find out when he contacted counsel and when, when they became aware of it. And I think also, under the circumstances, in fairness, I think we should at least be able to ask him what he's going to claim. A response? Your Honor, I, I don't think that's appropriate. Certainly, I don't, I don't think a proffer is necessary or appropriate in this I, case. I, I'm not going to do a proffer in this matter, okay? All right. So, oh, Mr. Rottenborg, sorry. I was almost at lunch. I know. I'm so sorry. Um, but truly, I truly am the messenger here because Mr. Murphy uh, I, I, just I, informed I, I, me that he has to just clarify one thing about— one clarification? Okay, all right. Okay. I, I apologize. That's fine. I think we need Ms. Myers.